In this video, let's learn about HTTP response status code. There are different status code. Specifically, we have five different categories. We have 100s, 200, 300, 400, 500. 100 is not very common, but it's for informational response. Right? So 100 represents informational response. 200s represent successful responses. 300s represents redirectional responses. But 400s represent client if something is wrong from the client side. 500s represent server errors. So something is wrong from the server side. So let's take a look at 200s. We have actually covered 200 OK. And in the code, we know that we're responding with 200 OK from get if everything is OK. So here in post, we're responding with 201, which is created. 201 created. So it says the request has been fulfilled and new re resource has been created on the server. So 201. And then put, we are responding with 204 is if everything is successful. And the description here says 204, no content. The server successfully processed request, but there's nothing to return, right? Although we are here returning something to the client just for demonstration purpose and for delete usually if everything is successful we are returning 200 okay so because in this case if we don't do anything it returns 200 so, so we don't do anything and then 400 it's client error so let's cover 400 first and then we're going to go back and talk about 300. So 400, the most famous one is for not found. So in our case, if we run our application, let's run it. You can see that we have this. And if we go to any URL, let's say, oh, 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 we haven't used this URL before. It just returns a blank page because we are using the run middleware. We're processing every single request. So this is not actually correct way to do it let's collapse everything and what i want to do here is at the very end here of the if statement if it doesn't fall into any of the previous branches then over here i want to give it 404 which stands for not found so the resource on the server is not found and this is the accurate status code now if i run it and then i go to slash o o o now you can see the error page properly it says this localhost page cannot be found and other client errors 400 bad request so the server could not understand the request due to invalid syntax for example if we are processing the post method here and we can't actually deserialize it or if after we deserialize this employee is is now then let's say that if the employee here is now what are we going to do we're going to say 400 because information provided by the client is is invalid and in this case we can write some information if we want if not we can just return back okay let's run this and let's go to add employee here let's say that if i remove this information and just click on send then we got an exception it says it doesn't contain any token so we need to do a try catch but before that let's add a empty json here and click on send it says employee added successfully so apparently this check isn't working very well we can add an if employee dot id at least we need to have an id right so if employee dot id is not end but or if employee.id is less than zero, then we can return status code 400. So just some condition in order to see the status code. So again, go back over here and click on the send button. Now we see the bad request coming back. And of course, over here, we can do a track catch and move this equally braces. And then we can catch an exception inside here. We can again return a 400 response here. If we want we can write some information back looks like we need to move this also into the track catch over here and if we want to write information about exception over here like this and let's run it again now let's go to postman let's remove this so this is going to trigger the same exception we have seen before and click on send button now we got the 400 bat request and we got all of the stack from the exception object 
out and we can see the information in the exception that's 400 then we have 401 unauthorized is right over here in the delete one right if we don't have this condition satisfied we're just spinning this out but by spinning this out we do see this error message in the page but the, the status code is still 200 so that's incorrect so for example if i go over here and i sent this request and you can see that it says employee is deleted successfully but if i change this from frank to frank one now i'm going to change the id to number two and click on send again it says you are not authorized to delete but the status code is incorrect is it is 200 okay so what is supposed to happen is that we need to change status code so status code to 401 before we write this response and of course we take the opportunity to fix this so status code of not found should be 404 and this is 200 so we don't have to do anything okay let's run the application again let's go to postman and go to get let's make sure that we have three different employees over here so john uh, jane and sam and let's go to delete still we're specifying the wrong authorization key and let's click on the send button now we see the same message but we got the correct status code 401 so that's our 401 unauthorized so we covered all of those three different things now let's talk about the 500 500 means that the data that comes from the client but something is wrong with the server side code for example there is a bug in our system it should trigger 500 for example by default if there's any exception that is thrown in our code here right here it's going to cause a HTTP 500 error in order to trigger that let's just throw an exception no matter what so let's say test exception let's bypass all of the code and let's click on run okay so this is supposed to be triggered if we go to the employees location right? employees URL here so let's go to employees and you can see this proper error handling page right and if we go to the postman here get employees and click on send we see 500 internal error so the status code of 500 is automatically set if there is an exception and it spits out the exception for you and from here ASP.NET Core has a default error page stack and you can see that on line 28 we have this throw new exception which is causing everything to, to crash and we can go to the different ones to see what is the query string what, what are the cookies what are the headers so this is the headers of the http request and the routing and this provides enough information for developers to troubleshoot of course in production environment we don't want to have this type of error page show up we can customize that we can talk about that later so by default we, if we don't do anything SPDN core already covers this exception handling thing and why is that how come ASP.NET core can handle the exception and throw the HTTP 500 that's because here although we only have this many lines of code right so everything ends here this is our uh, custom class everything ends here in our program.cs so although everything is very simple uh, we only it looks like we only have one middleware but as i mentioned before this middleware pipeline is actually wrapped by the exception handling so although we didn't specify the exception handling middleware but it is right there in the pipeline and we're going to talk about that when we talk about the middleware pipeline in the next section that covers our 500s and let's now look at the 300s so 300s is a redirectional message redirectional status code and let's take a look at some examples of for example 301 moved permanently so the drawing software that i'm using right now is from a certain url so let's go to with browser and let's try to use draw.io so this draw.io is the url that i always remember but if i hit enter notice that it's redirected to app.diagrams.net and if i go to the developer tool by pressing on 
12 and try to use the network tab to capture the traffic refresh button now if i go up so i, I cannot do this keep the network tab and then type in the url hit enter now scroll all the way up here and you can see the first one is draw.io and the status code is 301 so click on this go to headers and go to response header now look at this response header location it points to app.diagrams.net and then let's close this and go to the second one the request url is from app.diagrams.net so this is the same as the location header so what is actually happening right now well draw.io is permanently discarded and whenever you go to the straw.io it moves you to app.diagrams.net so in order to do this automatic redirect when you go to draw.io the server returns a 301 status code and at the same time it populates the location header and when the browser receives this response it says okay so the status is 301 then it goes to the location handler finds the new url and automatically sends the second request that goes to the new url when this new url is sent to the server now it returns 200 okay so this is uh, moved permanently so in the same way 302 represents the resource is temporarily uh, relocated at a different URL. So for example, if I go to this code here and go over here. So else if, so I'm going to test this with the path. And if this equals to slash RED, so redirection, then I'm going to say context.response.redirect. And I'm going to redirect to employees so this will trigger 302 302 all right so let's give it a try let's bring up our developer tool and let's refresh not refreshing but enter the path the url so redirection now it goes back to employees and if we look at our uh, network tab over here the first one redirection the status code is 302 and let's go in here and look at our response headers location points to slash employees so in the same way when the browser receives 302 it looks at the location header and then generates another request to the server and that request goes to employees the second one so that's our 302 font and 304 not modified means that there's some resources is cached on the browser so it's not modified yet therefore the browser is not go to the server to get the resource again it just uses the cached copy okay that covers all of our response status code if you have any questions please let me know if not i will see you in the next one